Welcome back, friends. Today, we're gonna try to make as many cutting boards as we possibly can. Let's go. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. Good morning. It's uh, it's about eight o'clock right now. We are today gonna try to build as many cutting boards as we possibly can. We got five 10 foot boards of eight quarter wood. We're just gonna try to build as many boards today as we can. We're gonna try to keep the clock in the frame for time lapses so you can keep track of that. So we started out the week wanting to build a lot of cutting boards because we were thinking if we do this right and, and we contact realtors and it's successful, we're thinking we're probably going to sell several of these per week. So we have to be prepared for the demand. We don't want somebody to put in an order and then all of a sudden we can't fill that order for you know three weeks when they want them a week from now. Um, so we knew we had to have a little bit of an inventory in our shop. So then we started thinking what is the max capacity of our little garage, right? We're working with this little two car garage and like very typical tools that are not like massive industrial tools. What's our max output? Because eventually we know we want to get into a commercial space. So we need to find a limit to our little two car garage so that we know when we need to grow and when we need to be willing to expand. And that's really scary to think about. Like we're just starting out right now in our two car garage. You're kind of thinking to yourself like, really? You think you're gonna get that big that in the near future, you're gonna need to move to a commercial space? So you almost feel like prideful or like embarrassed that you're thinking that far ahead or you, or you feel awkward for projecting your own success that far. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but but the only ones who are gonna get to a commercial space are the ones who have been planning it from the beginning because you don't wanna get to the point where you need a commercial space, but you haven't planned for it, so you are completely not ready to even make the move. You're drowning in orders in your two-car garage when you could have been in the process of getting yourself into a commercial space and not drowning. So all that to say, we had to guess at what we thought our max production capability was for our shop. And we really didn't want to limit ourselves. So we had to pick a pretty high outrageous number and legitimately work as if we were trying to hit that number and see how close we could get to it. So we did a whole bunch of math and we figured out that basically we had to build a hundred boards in a week to be able to afford and shift into a commercial space. So we're not gonna do that every week, but we need to have the capability to be able to do it in one week. We couldn't do 101 week because right now we're only spending three days per week on the woodworking business. So we decided to cut that in half and say, hey, we're gonna try to build 50 boards in three days. And that would get us close enough.
what's up? We just finished jointing two of the sides on these and we're getting ready to plane them. And our question is, is it worth our time to sort these by height so that we're not planing them all to the small, you know, cause if we were just a planer, we would plane all of these at the same setting. So they would all shrink a little bit. And do we really want all of these to be, be the, the size of the smallest one? It's basically we're just thinking about if it's worth the time to sort them by height to save whatever measurement that is between the smallest and largest. I'm plane. just worried the boards are gonna get too small. I don't wanna plane these so small that the cutting boards are all different sizes. I don't right. know. I say we sort them by size. We're never gonna have more time than we have now. But are we always gonna be sorting them by size though? Well, this would help us figure out if it's even worth it or not. If we find out it's not even worth it, then we never do it going forward. If we ever wanna experiment with it in the future, we're probably gonna be on a time crunch. This right. is like what all of our breaks are spent on. We're like, yeah, let's take a 15 minute break. Let's get some water, some coffee. And then we just like talk about this stuff on the couch for our entire 15 minutes and then come back out here. So we just went and bought all the pipe clamps that Home Depot had. The problem we were running into was that we were trying to do three cutting boards at a time in the long four foot clamps and it was just too much. It was bowing a lot, uh, the pieces were sliding around, we weren't able to get a good even bead to squeeze out, there were some gaps in some of the boards. So we just decided that two is the maximum number of cutting boards that we can do in a set of clamps. Well, we don't have that many clamps. We don't need clamps to be the limiting factor for how many boards we can produce. So. We went and bought all the clamps that Home Depot had. We're still two clamps short. We'll come back and get those another day, but just another reminder, don't focus on the money going out. Only focus on the money that you're bringing in. If I can clamp boards faster and I have an extra half day to make sales and talk to realtors, that's way more profitable than saving money and using fewer clamps because then it's gonna take you longer to build the boards, which is less time selling, more time building. So minimize your shop time as much as you can and focus on selling. So the first thing that we noticed was that we were getting really tired doing all of this repetitive work over and over and over. And I, like you guys have experienced this. If you're ever trying to build a large number of things at one time, you just kind of, your brain just kind of starts wandering and you're not really focused on the tool. It's kind of gets a little bit unsafe. So the first thing that we realized was that doing 50 boards in one batch was just way too many. It's There's just too much room for error. A smaller batch number going forward is going to help. It's not as taxing to do a smaller batch across the joiner than it is to do 50. Because at the at that point, like our backs were starting to hurt from turning around so much. Like we got some other issues to deal with, but we were just getting really tired with what we were doing. Another thing that we noticed was that our tools were not laid out well in our shop. Uh, for this kind of production work. If we're gonna be making 100 boards and that's all we're gonna be doing in the week, it's worth rearranging the shop for a better workflow. So uh, this is where we reach out to you. You guys have seen our shop. If you can see any sort of workflow or anything like that you, that you think might be helpful to us, let us know down in the comments if we could move a tool somewhere else. We moved the joiner over in front of the water softener just to make better use of the dead space and to rearrange the dust collection. That worked really well. So uh, other little tweaks like that will really go a long way in helping us figure out our production line. Really interested to hear what you guys can come up with. So another thing that really slowed us down was this is our first time doing it. And so we're trying to write a checklist of every step that needs to be done, working through order of operations, that sort of thing. Uh, so we kind of expected to, to be slowed down a little bit, but in spite of that, we came really close to our goal. What do we have? Like 46. we had 46 boards. So 
All right, so here's all the boards that we made this week. So even though we didn't make exactly 50, this was still a win for us. And that's really exciting because now once we get our sales train set up and figured out and we've got an avenue to push these boards through, all of a sudden, we step out of the business's way and we are not limiting how fast or slow it goes because we've already figured out how fast it can go. Or at least we've learned a speed that we can keep up with. We hit that 100 per week pace. And, and honestly, I bet we're still limiting ourselves a little bit. I bet we could do more than that if we really streamlined what we were doing even more. But had we not started at 100 and made our weekly goal 50, we would have quit at 30 and then never knew that we were capable of making 50 in three days in 101 week. Like you have to start high so that you don't quit early on yourself. You almost have to trick your brain into doing more than you think you can. Because as much as we'd love to blame our tools or go buy industrial sized tools to help us do this, right now our tools are not the limiting factor. It's our brains. 100% our brains are our limiting factor right now. So we found a really good quote that kind of summed up this whole concept, and it is, the eye only sees what the mind is prepared to comprehend, and that's by Robertson Davies. You have to be like mentally open to the fact that you can accomplish so much more before it can ever be manifested in your life. So set big goals for yourself. Yes, there's probably a laundry list of reasons of why you're not gonna achieve that goal, but the most successful people set big goals like that for themselves to the point where people kind of think they're crazy sometimes and they have just as many excuses as the rest of us. And then they find out that they're way more capable than they thought. So if you wanna hear even more on this topic and just catch up with us, cause like we can only put so much in a 10 minute YouTube video, we just started a podcast and we're super excited about it. And it's just a really fun place where we can catch up and talk about all our lessons. It is called Let's Quit. We've been working on it for a really long time and it is finally here. Uh, you can find it on all podcast streaming sites and you can also see the video of us recording it because we upload those to a YouTube channel as well. So again, if you wanna check it out, all the links you need are down below in the description right underneath the like button. If you wanna know why we called it Let's Quit, We'll explain it there because that doesn't really sound like us, does it? So to recap, we tried to make 50 cutting boards in three days. We came close, but we didn't quite meet that, but that's okay because we still learned so many new lessons. And I think now learning that we would be capable of making the 50 in three days if we had to. Also, we launched our new podcast, which is super exciting. So go give it a listen. And finally, set bigger goals for yourself because you have no idea how much you're limiting yourself by only setting realistic goals. So that's all from us this week. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.